afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. This is the um, this is uh, the, the Black Lives Matter rally, virtual rally put together for you by the United Front of the Diaspora. Uh, we have uh, many lineups, uh, uh, many speakers lined up for you. A uh, uh, quick reminder that the, the speakers, please stay within the time allotted uh, so we can get to everybody. So I will start. I will start with the famous words of um, with the famous words of uh, of Toussaint Louverture. En me renversant, on a abattu que le tronc de l'arbre de la liberté, mais il repoussera car ses racines sont profondes et nombreuses. Those were the pronounced words of Toussaint Louverture. In overcoming me, you've only cut the trunk of the tree of liberty of the blacks. It will spring up again from, the, from its roots, for they are many and they are deep. Indeed, Desalines will continue the revolution and create the first black republic. Haiti under Patreon will continue to liberate the great Colombia, which is now all the countries, Venezuela, uh, uh, Panama, uh, and Colombia, there's about seven countries that was the great Colombia at the time that are freed because of the Haitian people. Haitians have also fought to help free the United States to get, and also to gain its freedom and independence from the British Empire. Haiti and the Haitian people have always been the bearers of, free, of, of the touch of freedom. Haitians are freedom fighters wherever they are. We may be abused, but we will overcome. When they, when they wanted to label us as AIDS, car AIDS carriers, we shook the Brooklyn Bridge and took over downtown in a day that uh, FDA had to, move, had to change their, their, their uh, statement. When the police in New York City abused one of our brothers, Abner Will uh, Rima, we stood and fought for justice. In today's fight for justice, we stand with our brothers in America and around the world to claim what is, what is ours at birth, to live free and equal. Can you hear the Haitians? Can you hear how, how our heart beats? We are here with you. We can, you can hear us. You can, you can hear our drum beat beats from Miami to Boston to Canada. In New York, Haitian Rara led the Black Lives Matter protests across the Brooklyn Bridge last month. We are duly in the fight. We stand united and in solidarity with all freedom fighters, with our Black American brothers. L'Union fait la force. There is strength in unity. We know that we will see better days ahead as we stand in the shoulders of our giants, like Toussaint Louverture, Bookman, Desalines, Tante Toya, Mackendall, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, just to name a few. We will not be denied. We will fight to the end of days. L'Union fait la force, aïe bobo. So um, without further ado, uh, I'm going to the next speaker. Uh, which is, uh, so when we are called, please uh, turn your mic on and, and you can start speaking. Please be respectful of the time. The first speaker is uh, Mayor Champaign, Mayor Joseph Champagne from, from New Jersey. Mayor Champaign. Greetings to you all. In the name of God, the beneficent, the most merciful, I bear witness that there is none but he and I bear witness that regardless to labor, land, or language, there is but one God. And it is that God who has given us the strength and the power to overcome all obstacles that were placed upon us from the beginning of our sojourn from our motherland, Africa, into a strange land amongst a strange people, those Caucasian who saw fit to replace 
us to replace those indigenous whom they have destroyed and they have replaced those indigenous people with our brothers and sisters. We know the history. We know what God did for the history of Haiti is truly the history of God, the history of how where there is injustice, there is always justice eventually. So the history of Haiti is really a history of hope to all oppressed people, wherever they may be. Delve into that history. See how the modern uh, uh, Davids were able to overcome and destroy the Goliaths. So I'm coming to you humbly to force some of us to look deep into our history and stop looking at our history as if we were a bunch of people inspired by the devil. No, God was involved and he sent many Moses to us. Mackendall, Bookman, Dessalim, Toussaint Louverture, Tantoya, Cecil Fatima, Claire Ewers. These were men and women who represent the proverbial Moses. So as we look into the movement of the Black Lives Matter spoken of in many different places, not only in America, but also throughout the world, know that the cry for Black Lives Matter started and was concretized in Haiti. Yes, our ancestors said that enough was enough. And they believed and knew that their lives matter and they rose up and sacrificed that life that mattered so that they could save the greater population which is their own people. So brothers and sisters, we know, we know who our enemy is. Our enemy is the same one that was, but the problem is that enemy has crept in us through the educational system to the religious order and have made us an enemy of ourselves by circumstance, but we are not enemy of ourselves by nature. Depuis na Guinée, nek te toujours aimé nek. But it is through the miseducation and the mis uh, religious uh, dogmas that have caused us to lose that spirit of brotherhood, that spirit of love for each other, and that have caused us now to go at each other's throat, accepting the guns that the enemy has uh, put in our community, in our country, to kill one another. Where was those guns when we needed them, when we were fighting against the British, against the Spaniard, against the French? Why now should they give us those guns? It is because they know the job has been completed of in, uh, inserting the self-hatred element in us. But I'm glad that we have a united front that is seeking to unite those brothers and sisters, our Haitian brothers and sisters, not only from a national standpoint, but our brothers and sisters from America or throughout the world. We are one people regardless of national uh, origin. So we must un be united as one. And the last thing I wanna say is that on July 4th, which is this Saturday coming, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan will be giving a major announcement to the world to address the atrocities that our people have been facing. He's gonna address the leaders of the world who has saw fit to oppress the peoples of the world and make an announcement. And I pray that the leaders of the world will heed his call 
Because if they don't, I'm sorry for them. Because God is present and he's in the world. And so brothers and sisters, don't feel as if you are alone in this fight. We are one. And we're going to continue to find ways to link up with one another so that we can continue the legacy of our brothers and sisters pre-1804 and we claim the destiny of Haiti. We claim the destiny of the United States of America, which we have contributed greatly in making it such a great country by giving them access to the Louisiana territory, which now house 15 states. Yes, we did all of that. But more importantly, we wanna reclaim the world because that was the goal of Jean-Jacques Dessalines not only to free uh, uh, Haiti and the surrounding nations, but to free all the oppressed people all over the world. And that's why he issued not only the uh, independence of Haiti, but it was a universal declaration of, of independence against oppression and tyranny. Thank you so much for listening. And I look forward to participating, uh, to hearing your uh, expose. And I want to say from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I love you and I want to stand with you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Uh, thank you, Brother uh, 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 Mayor Champagne. Uh, next, we'll hear from uh, a young lady from uh, Georgia who's been very active in the movement. Her name is uh, Tamar Torshan. Tamar, you have the floor. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, for the sake of time, I'd like to thank the Haitian United Front of the Diaspora and of course, Mr. Flunz Bourget for allowing me the opportunity to be here. Um, so at first I wanted to talk in regards to the Black Lives Matter and what the Haitian community here in the US can be doing um, to contribute to the works of uh, the movement. Um, now, originally when Black Lives Matter started the hashtag. It was one to spread the knowledge and the word on social media, but also to bring a front so everyone can actually uh, uh, collaborate and also find the information necessary for those who were falling to the abuse of police officers around the nation, specifically as it relates to black lives. Today, that message has also maintained in regards to fighting against police brutality, but also it has extended to all injustice and oppression against Black lives in general. Um, and what that calls for when we say Black Lives Matter or when Black Lives Matters are shouted from young people, all types of people from around the nation is basically including all people, right? Including Black immigrants and Black people and as far as uh, whatever the justice is, whether the word is African-American or Black people, however you want to um, consider yourself, right? So. More so black people, black immigrants coming together for a stronger front in the fight against racism, structural and systematic discrimination um, against all black people for that matter. We ask ourselves what we can do. Um, and I know there's, I always say that there's roles in every way to make movement or make change happen. You have your marchers and your protesters and your aggressors and those who are on the street day and night understanding then you have the people that are in the courtrooms or in your legislators, right? That are moving on that front. And then you have your people that are organizing. So it's all a sense of bringing together all fronts, whether you're marching and you're walking, whether you're protesting, whether you're getting legislation and policies taken care of, or whether you're organizing within your groups. This includes building a power for black communities from Haitian Americans, for all immigrants and black people through community and advocacy, through building local alliances and cultivating and, and advancing for local and state legislation. To close out, some of the things that can be done now are organizations that are already in place, which means donating our services, our talents that we have and ensuring that we contribute to the works that are being done, organizing our groups through our socials, through our churches, through our programs that we're a part of, to participate in the work that is being done all over the nation. And lastly, 
donating our finances, our resources as it relates to monetary. The works that needs to be done, yes, can be done through services, but that green allows people to get work done amazingly, whether financing programs, financing leaderships, financing or organizers as a whole. So through all those things in advocacy and working towards it, I believe that Haitian Americans, not only here in Atlanta, but around the nation can contribute to the movement. Thank you. You're on mute still. You're on mute. Yes, thank you, thank you. I'm on, I was muted. Thank you. So thank you, Tamar, uh, for these for these beautiful words that you you spoke in today. Uh, is next. We're going to have a young man from uh, from Virginia, Joshua Moyes. Joshua Moyes, you have the floor. Hi, hey, everyone. Um, my name is Joshua Moyes, and I'm so glad to be able to speak on this amazing platform with all you wonderful people. I'd like to start off by saying a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Too many times we find ourselves in situations where things that are being said or done do not align with our beliefs, our morals, and our political standings. I say too often that future America has no room for radicalism, no room for those who aren't open to change. However, it has become a daily occurrence where we see someone speaking publicly via social media or in person about something charged with biased radicalism. It is here where I ask all members of the Haitian community, all members of the Black community, all American citizens to use the LBRE method of confrontation. Listen, back off, research, and educate. Listen to when someone tells you that black on black crime happens way more than white on black crime. Step away from, from the conversation and research. Through your research, you will find that black on black crime happens at a rate almost identical to white on white crime. You will also find that black on black crime is not racially charged. An African American will not kill another African American just for the color represented by his skin you will find that the suspects and perpetrators of black on black crime get punished severely. You will find that the suspects of, white on, uh, of black on white crime walk away free too often. And that an overwhelming amount of white, white, uh, white on black crime is racially charged. Your last step is to educate. Approach the person who made these opinionated claims and educate them. I say educate them instead of debate for one reason. When you enter a debate, the parties involved all have their standpoints. They all have their own opinions. More often than not, these parties leave these debates further away from understanding other viewpoints than when they had first entered the debate. You'll see, and more set on their own, and more set on their own opinions, which creates further divide. When you educate someone, you present to them undeniable facts, facts that they can either accept or ignore. You'll see that when you present someone with facts, their viewpoints will shift, further closing the divide. Using LBRE will help unite America through education. Too many times people get devoured by ignorance, the same ignorance that leads them to believe things that aren't true and vote for people who do more harm than good. This is our country, and I will believe that we will fight until we receive the justice we deserve. That is all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joshua. A little pause for a little music. Okay, is next on the schedule is um is Abaku Pichon from, uh, he's representing Delaware and Maryland. Pichon, uh, Abaku, if you online, please take the floor. Although I do not see you. Give a few seconds. 
I don't see Abaku when he does come in. We'll we'll uh, we'll hear from him. We'll move to the next person on the schedule. Is a young lady, uh, an attorney from uh, D.C. Uh, she's uh, one to be feared. Don't play with her. She is a district attorney, uh, and she uh, represents pretty high level in the D.C. area. Uh, I'm pl I'm glad to present to you Oeli Machu, uh, a young leader in the D.C. area. Oeli. Thank you, Albert, for having me. Um, just you, like you mentioned earlier, we've also been victims in the Haitian American community of police violence, We're not immune. This is our fight too. Um, Albert mentioned Abner Lima earlier. Um, it is our time to change the narrative. It is our time to be active in the community. And it starts at home. It starts with your local elected leaders it start with your state elected leaders. It start with you advocating on issues that matter to you. It starts with doing your research when an election comes around, a primary. We shouldn't just focus on the federal elections. That's not what really affects us at the bottom line. When it comes to unemployment benefits, the way you're treated with health care, with um, local resources, it comes from your state and local leaders and we need to keep them accountable. You need to call them when you have an issue. You need to hear what their positions are on issues and bring awareness to how we can change and bring solutions to our communities. It's also important with this new election that we gather our communities to go vote. Um, Michelle Obama mentioned that what really frustrated her wasn't the people who voted for Trump during the last um, presidential election. She was most bothered by the people who stayed silent and who didn't go vote. Those are the people who are to blame for where we are today. The people who felt like they sh their voice was not important and it didn't matter how it would affect their fellow citizens. It's important that we call our, um, call our families, our friends, making sure that they're registered to vote on election day, drive, out, drive around your community, give people rides to the polls. If your state has mail-in ballot system, encourage your community and your folks to vote early because um, at the end of the day, it might be difficult to stand in line for two hours like we've seen. Voter oppression is real. We must make sure that we're active and we're doing our part both at the federal and local level. Thank you. You're on mute, Albert. Keep forgetting, thank you. Um, <laughs> so thank you, uh, Oeli, for these words and, and advice that uh, we need to stay engaged. We need to uh, register our, our, our people. We need to actually make it and, and actually cast that vote. And as you said, it's not just the national level, it's also the local level, which is very important. Thank you very much for these words. Thank you. Um, next, uh, we have uh, Mr. Furman Backer. Mr. Furman Backer is uh, the, the president and CEO of the Haitian Renewal Alliance. Uh, he, he should come with no, uh, no introduction. Furman. Furman, are you there? I know you're there. Furman? Furman, we can hear you. I um, okay. I'm not sure what happened to Furman. He disappeared, um, or you are muted. He's Here you are, Furman. We can see you. I can, can see you. Hear us? He's just muted. He's muted. You probably muted. Yes. Okay, Furman is having some technical problem. Um, can you try to solve the problem, Furman, and then let me know when you're back. Um, next, we have uh, Evans Gamont. Evans Gamont from North Carolina. Evans Gamont from North Carolina. Not hearing anything from Evan, uh, Evans Gamont either at this, at this point. Um, Furman, are you, are you, are you okay now? I'm going to go to a little pause here for a quick minute so we can resolve the problems. Hey, 
Rachida na gade. Nous avons tout le monde la vie menacée. Faut les deux chanter, chanter ça. Mon père, oui. Aoulou, oulou, oulou, mon père, oui. Faut les deux chanter, chanter ça. In the meantime, if you if you are watching this on Facebook, please share. Uh, please share it by creating a watch uh, a watch party. It, you can find it under Albert Bikini or under United Front. For men, we are still waiting on you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Give me a second. Okay. All right, we finally have Furman online. So Furman, you have the floor. Hello, everyone. I'm sorry about that. I'm not sure exactly what happened, whether the technical difficulty is, is on my computer. But um, now that I'm using my phone so that um, I can I can talk. Initially, I started to say that I thank you, Albert, for putting this um, live Zoom um highly to 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 together and thank you everyone who had the time to part, participate this is an important time in our lives i've i've i've, I've came across the black life Matter movement years ago but this time it feels different and 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 what i've been observing that the talk or the every aspect of the promotion of white supremacy that have been going on for a, a long time is being talked about now from religion, social, and politics as well. Because we have to understand the mindset, the philosophy, and everything that white people have, have been doing for a long time in order to 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 show everybody else that they are superior than everyone else. Because if we look at it from a religious perspective, Jesus that we all worship and we all call the Savior, it has been portrayed for a long time as a white European. So when we go to church and we see a depiction of the person that we call a Savior, it does not look like us, it looks like them. And I have used that to compare other religions as well. I've, look, I've looked at um, um, Islam, where that they forbid the, the, the depiction of Muhammad. And I think it is for exactly the reason so, so that a prophet that is being worshipped should not look like anybody. If you look at Bud Buddhism, I did a search just the other day, just to look at what a Buddha looks like. It doesn't look like a European. It doesn't look like it just like a depiction of a person that they revere. So even that aspect is being reconsidered right now because of the Black Lives Movement. And now it comes across to something else. People are talking about confederacy or um, the statue of 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 confederate soldier or general. Let's look at that from a different perspective. How come that a country that has a civil war to protect the union was fought by some people who wanted to destroy the union, but now that all they do is to name school after them, to 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 depict the picture and to to name uh, um, monuments after them. These were the people who tried to destroy the union because of their beliefs and their philosophy. And I'm looking, this is a really an amazing time where we should not look 
the conversation as police brutality, as racism, as this and that, but really to enlarge the con conversation and to look at all aspects of the promotion of what supremacy that have been plaguing us for a long time. And I think that we as Haitians, if we look at our history, it's like that we fought against the French, but then that we have statue of, 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 of Bonaparte or statue of French soldier that we fought against that were trying to keep us slave. But that's not what we did. In fact, I had a conversation with somebody just the or oh, yesterday, and we said, well, if you look at, at the Battle of Gettysburg, they also put a uh, um, 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 ma monument of soldiers of the Confederacy. I said, yeah, but if you look at it, Bataille de Vertier, the people that you are, if you go to Haiti now and see Vertier, the people that you have in the monument are the people who fought for independence not the people who, who lost. So if we look at this movement, I think as taking a, 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 a different tone where every aspect of the promotion of what supremacy is being looked at. And we as Haitians, we've been there and we've done that. And if you look at Haiti itself, we do not have these people as statue or like as, as, as name of this, name, name, name of that. And we really need to take the, the conversation and really look at all aspects of it in order really to deracine de, de, de um, all these things that we've been taught and really make Black Lives Black Lives Matter movement a transformative movement. Thank you very much, Furman. Thank you. Um, again, I am on mute. Thank you, Fermin, for, for these words um, that you shared with us. Um, next, uh, we have uh, a gentleman from, uh, from North Carolina, uh, Evans Gramont. Evans Gramont, uh, you have the floor. Please unmute yourself. Great, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, I, think, I think this is a great first start uh, for all of us gathering here today as we continue this movement for Black Lives Matter. So I'm very honored to be part of this group and I um, want to thank you for once again inviting me to be part of this conversation. So uh, here in North Carolina, what I say is that there's, um, you know, we have a growing uh, population here in the Haitian community. Um, uh, every year there's more, I would say, uh, people that move into the state uh, with the Haitian background. So uh, it is growing in size. But overwhelmingly, what I would say is that uh, there's really two topics that I want to cover today and uh, what we tend to focus on uh, for the most part. One is, and I'm sure you guys have heard this many times on voting, and the other one is on changing minds. Okay, so the voting part, I think we've heard many um, times before the importance of voting. Uh, so I want to reemphasize that again, voting is very important to um, make sure that we focus on what matters to the Black Lives Matter movement. But beyond voting, what we want to stress a lot um, within our communities is to not only vote in the general election, but to also focus on local opportunities we have to make our voices heard. So if, for example, there's a school board that's having an election to um, nominate school board members, you need to make sure you are part of that. If there's an election for a local sheriff, election for local representatives, um, election for a local district attorney, all of those matter in terms of making our livelihood reflect the way we wanna raise our children and the way we want our neighbors to be treated just like us equally as well. So these local elections are critically important and too often uh, within the black community, we tend to um, galvanize and energize ourselves during the general election. And we need to make an effort to change that. So as much as we can um, within the Haitian American community and with the most and broadly within um, the black community in general, to make a concerted effort to make sure going forward, uh, we make sure our voices are heard <clears throat> in all elections, whether it is a national election or local city or school board. And the second point is on changing minds. 
Uh, so the the one piece. Um, so make sure I'm not, sorry about that one. Make sure I'm not losing connection here. Yeah. Um, so around changing minds, uh, the the important topics of this is to making sure that, as you know, during the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, there's been uh, some that have used it as an opportunity to distract and to take away the focus on this being a human issue and not a political issue. So I think we've all heard the, the responses that sometimes we hear that, what about all lives matter? What about blue lives matter? So it's upon us, I think, to try as best as we can to change minds in a positive way, to reinforce the notion that when we say Black Lives Matter, it's not taking away the value of other lives. It's basically stating that too often within this society, within America, that Black lives have shown to be uh, treated lesser than other lives. So as a result of that, that's why we're emphasizing Black Lives Matter. And I think we all are in agreement with that. And we just need to make a concerted effort to help change minds to that aspect. So what I mean by that is, um, if you live in a neighborhood and you have your neighbor who doesn't have a similar viewpoint as you do, um, it may be worth how if you have the opportunity to develop conversation with that person, if you have that relationship, sometimes it helps to have difficult conversations in a respectable manner and just share your point of views, help them understand what is meant by Black Lives Matter. And if you go to church, if you have um, your friends, parents, from your schools, from soccer teams, from football team, basketball teams, just at times when it's feasible, obviously, if you have that relationship with that individual, do as much as you can to help change minds within the society that you live in, because that's how we're going to make a difference. Because if we only talk to people who look like us, who think like us, it's going to be hard for us to make the changes that we need to do. So it's important for us to do as much as we can to change minds, and to help people understand the importance of us rallying together as one people to make a difference where everybody is treated equally. Okay. So those are really the two points that I wanted to address. I know we have we are limited in time, but once again, I wanted to say thank you and I look forward to hearing what others have to say. Thank you very much. Now from New York. Uh, Mr. Vanell, fly. How are you? Albert, uh, thank you for having me. I'm really uh, excited uh, by being here on this uh, forum. I had some technical difficulties earlier. Um, I'd like to thank the United Front for, Haitian, for the Haitian diaspora for putting this together. Don't underestimate the job of the organizer, the job of the person and the people and the group to, to get us together. And it's an amazing thing to have IECNs from across the country, from across the world, getting together talking about this. I'm gonna talk about three things. I'm gonna talk about voting, census, and economics. Before I get into that, Black, African-American, Haitian, Haitian descent. When the cops are there, when people are looking at you, they don't know if you're Haitian. They don't ask if you're Haitian, if you're Trinidadian, if you're what have you. We're here, we're, we're Black, and we're in this country. So what is the what is the 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 the, the duty? What is the, the the duty of the of the of the Haitian American, the Haitian American uh, that's 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 here in this country? And we have a strong duty, and we have a strong duty for for Haitian Americans and being part of this movement. And this movement creates an opportunity. It's not just about police reform. It's not just about criminal justice or what have you. Uh, as many people said. Now we can rethink and relook at, reimagine what, where, are, where we are in this country, where we are in this world, and this movement is taking the world by storm. So we should not, uh, we should take full advantage of this moment as Haitian Americans and as Americans here in this country. Uh, in New York, I am a New York State uh, lawmaker, and we have a caucus of five assembly members. Um, and it's very important for us to be, even be in that position that means that many of us had to vote to, in order to be that. We have Mikhail Solage, who next year will chair the Black Latino um, Puerto Rican Caucus in New York for all of New York State. We have a Rodney Bichat, who is the chair of the, of the Democrats of the largest county 
in the country, in Kings County. We have Kimberly Jean-Pierre, we have Mathilde Funtis. In New York, we just passed a package of, 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 uh, of police reform bills. And because we were there, because I was there, we were able to make real change and really affect what bills go in and how they're, how they're passed. I myself just went through uh, 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 an election. Um, Kings County's in Brooklyn, in case people don't know. I'm out of Queen, I'm out of New York. We're all out of New York. Um, Kings County's in, in Brooklyn. But I myself just went through a, 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 a relatively difficult election. And the reason why I made it through is because we voted, which is very important. But let me talk about economics, very important. That we must talk about this more and we must focus on economics. It is a shame that the people that are running for democratic office, um, when, I'm sorry, running to be the democratic nominee for president, when all 27 of them knew one fact, they all knew the fact that African-Americans and black people in this country were worth the least out of all groups. That's a shame. It's a shame that, that in 2040, the project, it's projected for us to be worth less. We must focus on our econ economics. It doesn't make sense if, if the entire fight is for, for police officers to treat us better while we're still at the bottom. We must focus on an economic uh, agenda. What do we do now? How do we do that? Number one, with, through, with, the, with respect to this pandemic, many people are afraid to go back to work. Uh, in New York, I have a list of over 200 jobs uh, and our opportunities that are happening now. We must try to be, get those jobs first. Businesses, we must open up businesses. There are a lot of coronavirus and pandemic related new businesses that we should look into. The diaspora should also look into how do we bolster up our, 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 our economics? How do we make sure that wherever we are, whether we're employees, we can scale up. Whether we're businesses, we build our, we, we, we scale up our businesses. Voting, voting is very important. We must make sure we vote as other people said, in all elections, we must be a voting group. We must have a strong voting block. And we must work to make sure that the Haitians or whatever, wherever you are, has a strong voting block. Um, census, please fill out the census. We, the census is happening right now. Go to my 2020 census. Professor, my teacher. The reason why I'm saying that is because we coming from Lazio, Lazil Haiti. Lazil Haiti is in the department of NIP. As we were growing up, we have that sense of identity. We looked up to our ancestors. Once Haiti became independent in 1804, our president is black. Our engineer is black. Our doctor is black. Our lawyer is black. So we had that sense of identity and nobody could tell us we could not become an engineer or we be, could not become president. We could not become a lawyer. And that sense of identity is what also help us in this country. If I can come from that little village, working two, three jobs, becoming a lawyer here. So we have paved the road for the generations to come. It is a pride for us as Haitian American to say, yes, our lives matters. Our ancestors knew that their life mattered and that's why they chased the colonialists, even though they never really left because the colonialists made sure that they ripped all the benefit, that they exploited all the resources that our country had between France and the United States, they took all the resources that Haiti had. All we had left was our sense of identity. And this is what has helped us to get this far. Mohammed, uh, Mohamed Magendi said, be the change that you want to see. So the change that we want to see is for our children to go the next step. We as immigrants came here, worked very, very hard to pave the road for our children. We could not make it that far 
because of all those obstacles that we had to overcome as first generation immigrants. Nobody works hard, hard or harder than the immigrants. So what I say is that we are proud to see despite all these odds that we have engineers, we have lawyers, we have judges. When I look at your panel, we have politicians. It is a pride for us. But what we want to say together is that we matter, our life matters, our children life. When we're talking about black lives, we're talking about our children, our children. It's not other, we're not talking about other lives. We're talking our lives, all of us, the people of color. And it's important for us Haitian American to know or Haitians to know when we're talking about Black Lives Matters, we're talking about the lives of our children, the future of our children. So what do we see as changes? What do we want to see? We want our children to be the next lawyers, the next judges, the next law, all the lawmakers, the next president. Why not? We were not born here. Albert and I, we cannot be become president of this country because we were not born here. But our children, uh, please put yourself on mute if you're not speaking. Thank you very much. Um, Marilyn Toussaint from Chicago, are you online? Please unmute yourself. Okay, having not heard from uh, Marilyn Toussaint, the next uh, speaker is a young man from uh, uh, one that I know very well. Uh, Sebastian Dikedi, my own son, um, is uh, the next speaker. So Sebastian, please uh, take the floor. Hello, thank you for this opportunity. Bonsoir tout le monde, je m'appelle Sebastian Dekadi, sac passé. I attend Urbana High School as a rising junior, and I would like to say how proud I am to be Black and partake in an event promoting the growth and awareness of the Black Lives Matter movement. But that said, these past few months for us Haitian Americans have been both a nightmare and dream as it portrayed the unexplainable police brutality against our color, and it also showed the powerful grit we have as Blacks, as a collective unit, to be able to protest uh, in America despite the ongoing pandemic. And to that, I put my right fist up and I say, Black Lives Matter. As a young Haitian American, when I was presented with the question of what could young people do to help slash improve the Black Lives Matter movement, the answer to me at first wasn't crystal clear as a multitude of ideas sprung throughout my head. But amidst this quarantine, that answer became crystal clear, social media. Social media like Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, uh, Twitter, Reddit, Discord, etc., is something that our generation has become extremely adept to using. By using our social media presence to gain, to gain the attention of our schools, uh, the attention of our schools, our communities, our state and national legislature, we can bring change uh, on, upon America. One post at a time, one share at a time, one hashtag at a time. We can also make an impact by donating to the Black Lives Matter Foundation directly or sharing the Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter Foundation donation link in our social media profile. Despite my inability to vote and create a political change, I will continue to be engaged in the Black Lives Matter movement through my social media. So in the future, my kids won't have to, to face the same racism and oppression I'm facing. The task of stopping racism is monumental and it starts with us, the youth. And if there's anything I've learned in the past few months, it's that united, we can make an everlasting change in America. Now I ask, what are you doing for the Black Lives Matter movement and what could you do better? Aïtien Nouye, thank you for your time. Merci pour votre temps. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you very much for, for these words and uh, your activity in, uh, in Urbana. Um, and fighting for your own rights. Thank you, son. Petit <laughs> uh, The next, uh, we're going to Connecticut. Um, we have uh, a, uh, a young man, I'm gonna call him a young man, who's been very active, uh, runs an organization called Haiti Lumière de Dume. And uh, so, um, Louis Elneus. Louis, you have the floor. Chris, uh, there may be some people waiting on the, on the, on the room. Please uh, ent enter them since you're the host now. 
Louis L. News, are you there? Okay, I'm not hearing Louis. So when he does come back, uh, let me see if Marilyn Toussaint is in. Marilyn, are you in? Yes, I'm finally in, yes. Ah, How are you? Awesome, awesome. I'm sorry if uh, there were any problems. So uh, again, another esteemed attorney from, uh, from uh, Chicago. Hello. She is the uh, she is the executive director of. Uh, um, uh, I can help you out. I can help you out. Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the Congress, Hello, Haitian everybody. Congress. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Marilyn Tusen. I'm an attorney uh, in Chicago. Um, professionally, I've been an assistant public defender, so I do criminal defense work for the past twenty-seven years. And I'm currently the president of the Haitian Congress to fortify Haiti. So uh, yes, please share your your speech now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> wow, I didn't know I, I didn't know I was on. Well, I don't necessarily have a speech, but I do believe that the Black Lives Matter movement is something that we are experiencing, and it's um, it's really time for it. I think it's very timely uh, because for so many, for so long, uh, people of color, especially of African descent, we have suffered in so many ways. And I'll speak from the criminal justice system since this is where my expertise lies, is that if you look at the laws and the legislation in criminal justice reform, there really, there have been some, but for the most part, the people who suffer the most from uh, the criminal justice system are people of color, people who look like us. And as a criminal defense attorney, I can tell you that more than 80% of the incarcerated people are black males. Um, and that's not by accident. Uh, uh, that's purposeful based on so many um, reasons. And mostly it's the laws you have, you know, the laws regarding crack cocaine and powder cocaine. You have the uh, reform in the Sentencing Act that allows, uh, you know, higher sentences for drug offenses from the war on drugs, um, and so on and so forth. So I think that as Afro Caribbeans, we really need to be cognizant and know that we are, we must stand by our brothers and sisters. Uh, we are no different from them. When we walk into a room, we are black people, period. And even if we didn't look black, we are still black people. Um, and so as this movement continues, we need to do what we can to support it, uh, to participate in it, to uh, contribute to it. Um, I'm hoping that these last uh, months, during the COVID, I call it the COVID era, that we really had time to look to see what's really been happening to our brothers and sisters. As someone who is in the front lines who sees it daily, I think sometimes uh, people become detached and they think, well, you know, that's them, that's not me, and this, this hasn't happened to me, and I don't necessarily know anybody has happened to. But I can say that, you know, if you are a black person, there's somebody you may not know that it has happened to. And so uh, the protests, the calling for change, the, you know, demanding that they change the legislation, to, you know, for the demand for justice, uh, we need to contribute to continue to fight for that. Um, because it is, you know, we have children who will grow up in the United States who have really besides us, no attachment to Haiti. And even if we didn't, we live here, we contribute here, our tax dollars go here, we attend school here. Um, so we have to continue the good fight. Uh, I'm not gonna speak for too long because I don't know how much time I had. So, um, so I thank you for inviting me today. Uh, I really appreciate speaking to everyone on the call. Uh, and I, I thank everybody for taking the time to actually join the rally on this Sunday afternoon. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Marilyn. I'm um, sorry if uh, you did not get the communications, but uh, I, we did send uh, all the communication with the details. Um, so um, next person, uh, if Luis L. Neus is on, uh, we're going to Luis L. Neus. Luis, are you on? Oui, allô. Oui, allô. Bonsoir. Allez, Luis. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, qui souligne non donc félicitations à à Tony Decadie et toute équipe staff et Haitian Front pour une belle réunion ça donc moi c'est c'est très 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 important that you know we are engaged ourselves in this um, uh, movement um, uh, when you consider driving down the street um, the police do not recognize you know you are particularly Haitian Jamaican or Trinidadian or St. Lucians, they just see a black person. Um, and as so many speakers before me have said, that it is time we get engaged politically. And it is not just a political fight. It is not just police brutality. It's economic brutality or economic um, seclusion. Um, it's social seclusion. Um, also, we participate actively in the education system. Um, a perfect example, uh, uh, Princeton University has decided that they will um, remove the name Joe Wilson to its school of foreign policy. But you know, if if you if if we can imagine what Joe Wilson's policies were towards Haiti, and that's when he invaded Haiti, and we should be a part of the conversation, not just you know what um, he did as a racist president of Princeton University or president of the United States, but internationally, what was his um, um, political views towards blacks, and we are a direct um, victim of his um, racist policies. So um, it is to say we can't just, you know, um, um, focus. Unfortunately, we we um, bear those three um, responsibilities. You know, living in this country, and we have international responsibilities, and also we have responsibility towards the homeland. Um, we can't just fight here. We have to fight the racism that's going on there, too, um, especially if you think at this moment how the U.N. creates this you know, bureau on Haiti. Um, they are dictating what policies Haiti should push, push forward instead of Haitian, Haitians making decisions for Haiti. Um, so I think it is important, and I hope this, was, this will not be the first or the last meeting that we have of this sort. Um, it should be a continuing effort, and we know it takes a whole lot to put together things like this. And um, I hope um, we can um, donate times to Haitian Front to conduct um, those meetings even on a monthly basis. And we need to get organized, like I said, and we need to participate here in Connecticut. That's what we're trying to do, join forces with other local uh, uh, organizations that are fighting racism, be it, you know, Hispanic organizations, or uh, um, the NAACP and all these other organizations that have been in the forefront of this fight. So um, it is an honor and opportunity to participate with all of you who are so engaged and hopefully this will not be our last meeting together and we will go forward and, and join the fight and hopefully make a difference. And um, one last thing I think, one last thing, Albert. Uh, this is this is a congratulations to you. And we adults cannot win the fight alone. We have to engage the kids. And bravo to you, and bravo Sebastien, um, for engaging. And I think that's the future. We're not gonna win it all by ourselves. And their generations, the Sebastian's generations, the younger kids. And this is why too we should get involved in our communities and promote cultures um, among our kids who are here. Um, so that they know where they come from. They know the tremendous heritage that they are responsible to carry on. Thank you. Thank you, Louis. Thank you very much. Thank you. Keep up the good work in, uh, in Connecticut. Uh, next we have, I want to I wanna tell uh, Commissioner Monestin that I do know he's online and that I do have three people ahead of you. I'm going to go to the next person and I'm going to let you speak because I know you're speaking in a university. Uh, as the keynote speaker today. So um, let me go to Tonyan, uh, Tonyan Vernet, which is uh, the pillar that uh, the community, the Haitian community in Maryland stand on. Tonyan Vernet. Hello, bonsoir. Uh, I want to thank Maître Abel for inviting me to this meeting. 
And uh, for, I just want to remind us that we have been struggling. We as Haitian, we, we are our people of struggle. We have been struggling as a woman, we have been struggling for our rights, for our respect, and we have been struggling for all life matters. Like somebody was saying, it's not Haitian or It seems like we have some connection trouble with uh, Tunyan. Powering off. Into the fight. It's like in Dominican, we are having problems. We have to be engaged into the fight. And um, thank God Almighty, we are getting organized. Thank you, Mr. Albert, for, for your support. Thank you, my dear Salim. Thank you to all my Claire Heureuse, Eugenia Charles, and all of us who are on the line. You are our Dessalim. You are, guys, our Claire Heureuse. You are like your son, like Pastor Moise's son, daughters. We are all. We need to be engaged. We need to go and vote. We need to be part of the platform, we have to be really make the struggle a reality for our Haitian kids that are living here. Do not say we are not part of it. We have example of he felt Johnny killed by the police force in Virginia. We have to Go on. The lutte, la lutte continue. Il faut avancer. Nous allons avancer comme des salines. Et merci beaucoup. Thank you, Mr. Albert. Thank you once again. Like the gentleman was saying before, we hope that we that will have more. Again, it seems like we uh, we lost uh, Sister Tunyan for her last word, but I think uh, we got pretty much um, what she was saying. Uh, it seems like we're having some connection issue, Chris. Um, I don't know. Um, so um, we have Tunyan. I'm I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, I'm moving on to the next speaker. Um, Sorry about that you did not get your last word in. Um, so I'm going next to uh, to this new to this uh, young man from uh, New Jersey, uh, Junior Philistin Jean. Junior Philistin Jean. Hello. Yes, Sister Tunyan, we can hear you now. You can finish your statement. I no. Uh, Junior Philistin Jean from New Jersey. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. And it's it is a privilege for me hey, to be on this platform. I, I'm, I'm so grateful to, to hear hey, so many great, great things. So I will say thank you to Sebastian Dicardi because when I hear hey, Sebastian talking, and we can see that we have hope because hey, I want to make focus about this because one thing that we're always talking about 1804, that deciding to say we know as Haitian how to fight for justice and equality. And deciding to say they had an opportunity to do not fight, but they said that we don't want our kids, our great, our great kids, to be living in this slavery and poverty. So they had to fight not only for Haiti, but for all Black in general. So what we've been seeing today and police brutality. We have a personal standpoint, a responsibility as, as individual, as the society, to keep fighting for justice and equality. Not only for that, but we also need to put focus on education. If we look at the, the data in California, 
75% of black Californian boys don't, don't meet the state reading standard. So we as a black community, we also need to be engaged on education on all, as well as voting system. There was a gentleman talking about census. We need to make sure that we, we get engaged in, in the state level and, and the local level, because if we don't do that, if we don't do that, we, we, we don't know what will happen. So the role of the police is like put can save, but at the same time, if we don't educate, if we don't have a conversation, a real conversation with the kids, with the society, with the local level, how we, how we can move in forward. Mm -hmm. So my point is that we, we need to keep forward, we need to work together, and we know how to fight because a Malcolm X said, nobody cannot give you equality, nobody cannot give you freedom, justice. If you are human, you have to take it. We know how to go get it. We also need to keep uh, to keep forward and 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 on standpoint working together as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Junior uh, Philistin. I know you're doing great work in New Jersey. We we do call you to be more active with the United Front uh, and to collaborate with us uh, as well. So uh, many people who come on the line want to thank Albert Decady for what's going on. There's a whole crew behind behind me. Uh, there's Chris, there's a whole board of people, there's a whole executive team that put this together. So I do not want to take all the credit for myself. It is a credit for the United Front that is uh, that worked so hard to actually put this program together. Um, next, I want to go to another young lady um, in, in uh, Virginia. That is Soraya Moise. Soraya Moise. Yes, hello. My name is Soraya Moise and I'm 20 years old. I'm a third year undergraduate student at the University of Virginia and I'm pursuing a major in sociology while on the pre-med track. Sociology in simple terms is defined as the study of societies and how humans act in groups. It includes the act of asking why when presented with a certain issue, pattern or simple human interaction. As someone who has been studying sociology for almost three years now, I feel like I can take a more educated stance on what I believe regarding police brutality and the fight for justice in the Black community. First and foremost, I most definitely believe that my life as a Black Haitian American woman matters and that all my Black brothers and sisters' lives matter. I would like to take the rest of my speaking time to reflect on a conversation that I had with someone who tried to start a debate asking me, well, what about black on black crime? While I was discussing how people of color are disproportionately killed more by police than white people are. I replied to them by saying that we are discussing racism and black people do not just kill each other solely because they are black. Secondly, if you were to compare white and black neighborhoods with similar income levels, you will find that there are similar rates of crime, but systemic economic inequality is a factor that many people forget. So if you use comparisons that put together both wealthy and upper income class neighborhoods that are predominantly white and middle to low income neighborhoods that, are, that predominantly have more people of color, it skews the data. Poor people commit more crimes because economic insecurity leads to those crimes. It just so happens that Black people are still at an economic disadvantage because of the enduring consequences of America's racism throughout history. Thanks to my sociological background, I was able to step out of the problem presented and ask the question of why. I believe that that will be the, fir the key first step into seeing change in our country. If we as people, as Haitians, as the human race, step out of our biases and ask why, it will then lead us to be able to find a solution to the problem. The one most important thing that I would like to say here before I finish is directed toward my generation. We cannot be silent. We must use our voices as we are in fact the future. Go vote, sign petitions, call out your racist friends and family members, support black businesses, Supporting Black businesses does so many amazing things, including closing the racial wealth gap, strengthening local economies, fostering job creation, and holding other companies accountable. While this may not be the easiest endeavor, there is power in numbers, and I am confident that if we combat this together, we will definitely see results. Enough is enough, and it is our duty to take action. Thank you so much to Albert and everybody who allowed me to have the opportunity to speak to you today, and I hope you all have a blessed day. 
Thank you, Soraya. Thank you very much for these words. So again, continue to share this 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 live. Uh, taking a little music break as we cue in uh, the esteemed commissioner, John team from Florida. Commissioner Monestine. You cannot mute yourself. I will stop the music once I see you. We have uh, Commissioner Monestim from Florida uh, joining us today. Thank you, uh, Commissioner, because I know uh, your schedule was pretty pressed today, and you still said yes to this to this event. So uh, the the whole United Front thanks you for for your presence here today. We don't have video though. Um, let me see what's going on here, Albert. Can you see me now? Yes. Okay, very good. Well, um, first let me say thank you to you and to the board members of the United Front for this invitation and for engaging um, in this uh, conversation. I, I must say I, I, I missed the opportunity to hear Sebastian speak since I've heard a number of people mention him, but uh, let me confess that I just got schooled by Soraya. And we can say that uh, indeed uh, our future is in good hands. So as um, and, and, in light of the conversation taking place uh, since the death of George Floyd, uh, which I think we all um, uh, condemn and are on right, um, we come to this conversation with a sense of uh, concern. Uh, but nevertheless, I think as Haitian Americans and as Haitian period, we also need to approach this conversation with a sense of responsibility. And, and I say with a sense of uh, responsibility, considering that um, Haiti, Haiti and Haitians uh, give birth uh, to democracy, give birth uh, to freedom uh, to, uh, to the world. And I often refer to the fact that uh, the United States uh, Emancipation Declaration didn't take place until 1859, I believe, nearly 63 years after the independence of Haiti. Definitely 63 years after uh, La Bataille de Vertier. So, which uh, uh, brings to uh, uh, which uh, brings the understanding as to why uh, this country, though though we've uh, 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 struggled with the issue of 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 of, of uh, a, a class politics in Haiti, uh, but which brings the understanding as to why the United States of America and the rest of the world are still struggling with the issue of racism. A systemic racism in the United States have uh, uh, had a negative impact, I would say, on almost all of us, including, um, uh, uh, if not all of us, many of us on this call, uh, as a black man and as an immigrant living in in, in this country for the last forty years, I, I've uh, you know I've uh, felt the brunt of of uh, uh, racism and discrimination. And it, it throughout of all my endeavors, including serving as a county commission. So, so what that tells us uh, in regard to this moment and this situation, truly, I feel from the uh, from from the depth of my heart and, and my soul that this is an opportunity for Haitian Americans to lead. It is an opportunity to lead. It's not an opportunity to be on the sideline. It is an an opportunity to be uh, uh, in the front line to address this issue because our perspective on the issue of racism and the issue of, of, uh, of uh, uh, 
uh, of people not being free uh, to, to perform their duties, uh, to fully live their life is, is what was at the core of the Haitian revolution. And, and we do come to this with, with uh, a sense of pride, I, as I said, but we also must feel the responsibility um, as we did early on in, in working with, with, with countries like Greece, with the state of Israel, with Latin America, uh, on the, the leadership of our predecessors to free the rest of the world. And there are accounts as to how many, of lead, many leaders throughout the world, uh, every now and then, uh, uh, pay tribute to Haiti's contribution to their plight uh, 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 to freedom. So we need to accept, accept this sense of responsibility that this cause is, is actually is currently placed on our shoulder. Uh, uh, for those of us in the legislative air, uh, arena and government, we must legislate, le continue to legislate in order to, 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 to uh, uh, make sure our, our people uh, see better days. For those of us who are just demonstrating in, 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 in the street, we need to do this very tactfully, but peacefully. And I say peacefully because uh, 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 for the last 50 years, for the last 70 years, we've seen so many demonstration as to how civil disobedience and peaceful demonstration have contributed to the betterment of the world. Otherwise we wouldn't be talking today about the like of uh, Mahatma Gandhi and, and also uh, Dr. King and many others that have contributed to to uh, uh, our rights here in the United States, especially since the civil rights movement. So I say to do so peacefully because the leaders don't always react to what's happening in their life. Re leaders usually organize, plan, strategize, and execute. So we need to organize, plan, strategize, and execute. If we do so, we will not be reacting emotionally to what happened out there we will be effective in our demeanor and our endeavor as well uh, so that we can, we can truly see the fruit of our labor and help our children and grandchildren benefit from the fruit of that labor. For we need to always be reminded as change architect, as change makers, that we are indeed, we are indeed uh, 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 leaders in what we do. And to do it right, we must be reminded that uh, peace truly is more powerful than aggression. The power of peace is stronger than the power of aggression. We must also be reminded that the power of love is stronger than the power of hate. You know, in, in demonstrating peacefully and protesting peacefully and, and with love in our heart, with, with a sense of, of community building or community construction, if we approach it this way, we will always put things in perspective. We will always put things in their right place. And we will not follow you know, the act of those uh, on the path of those who destroy their communities, who burn businesses. Look, there is a time and place for everything because we know some of our ancestors use uh, 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 you know, uh, all the tools at their disposal. But, but, but I, don't, I, I, I think in, in this environment where we currently are right now, we need to use the power of love, the power of a strong spirit, the power of, of a strong leadership. We need to uh, 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 use as well the power of interdependence, aligning ourselves as leaders with other groups that are, that are strong. But in order to join this group, what we have to do as well is making sure that we are strong among us. Let's support one another, support the United Front, support the other agencies and organizations in your communities. Make sure that uh, when they ask for a contribution, if you don't have a lot of money, whatever you have, you bring it to the table anyway. Bring your talent, bring, your, bring, bring resources, whatever kind of resources you have. Let's strengthen our community because we need to approach this movement from, an, from a position of strength, okay? If we are strong, other strong organizations will reach out to us. And if we are strong, when we reach out to other strong organizations, they will not deny us the partnership. They will work with us. Uh, sir, uh, as, as Soraya stated earlier, we need to uh, uh, join a cause, join a cause. 
if you if you're not a citizen help register people who are united states citizens to vote if you are a citizen register yourself to vote and make sure you go to the polls if you cannot go to the polls but you are earning a living or you are an entrepreneur contribute to a cause give some money give some time and will that as we work together i promise you we will succeed together thank you very much for allowing me to partake in such a wonderful movement and a wonderful discussion and i'm a soldier in your army united front albert reach out to me and call on me anytime and i'll be there to serve thank you thank so you, much thank you commissioner thank you commissioner manestein um so if uh, we've been having trouble with uh, with facebook uh, the the link keeps on uh, and 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 we keep losing the stream so if you are sharing on Facebook, so please go do it again because we just lost the stream and uh, please we do it again. Uh, let everybody know about this event. So the next speaker is a young man who've left, who've left the United States to actually go and, and, and start business in Haiti. Uh, without further ado, uh, we are running a little bit uh, behind, way behind on time. I wanna apologize to, uh, uh, Represent Representative Daddy jo Joseph, who was supposed to be on right now, uh, but I want to go to a few people in between. I hope that you will indulge us um, as we as we are running a little bit behind time. I see and we, bon, eh, sorry about that. Uh, we avec. Uh, we go to Chris. Chris Gentil. Chris. Hey everyone, uh, back at it again, as as the test phrase goes. I want to uh, thank everyone who uh, has taken time out to, part to participate. It's really important that we talk about these issues, no matter what our focuses are. Uh, as Albert mentioned, I am living in Haiti. I am working on uh, improving the quality of life of, of, of our Haitian brothers and sisters in the, on the island. But still, nous sommes seulement, and with 80% of some of our more productive, educated folks living abroad, uh, it's really important that we uh, make an effort to ensure that we are wherever we are, we're participating in the struggle that uh, will help not only just us, but the folks who look like us and are trying to do the very same thing, right? Uh, for sure, I, I wanna make it very clear. You know, one of the biggest things I always hear uh, amongst my generation is, you know, what are, hey, uh, what are we doing as a group in the diaspora to advance our, not only our interests, but the interests in general. And like what, the Haitian diaspora isn't organized when I hear that, I usually ask, have you tried, have you done a Google search for any group doing anything? What have you done to try to engage and impact, right? And usually, well, I haven't really, but I don't see none. Nah, nah, it's, it's on you, man. It's, it's, you gotta make that effort because there's organizations like United Front, like many others that are working very hard to advance the betterment of, of Haitian people and also black people uh, specifically, right? When it comes to Black Lives Matter, I wanna make something very, very clear. Uh, it's important that we take the streets. It's important that we vent our frustrations. It's important that we vote. Uh, we, it's important that we engage on all levels. You know, it's not just the president. It's the it's our mayor. It's our city councilman. It's our outermen if we're in Chicago. You know, it's that local level. We have to make sure we engage and understand really at the level that matters directly. It, it's very close. It's, it's as close to that. It's our representative. It's our senator. That has to be clear, right? But the most important thing, no matter what level of engagement you are, it's so crucial and critical how you spend your money. It's just that simple, right? How you spend your dollars is probably the most powerful activist act you can do. Going out your way, inconveniencing yourself and going out your way to spend your money at a, at a black establishment, at a Haitian establishment, at a black business, black product, Haitian product, Haitian business, the more you can inconvenience yourself and go out your way to make sure your dollar is, is being spent in our community. That is the most revolutionary act you can do every day. It's not just, oh, well, you know, I, I'm, you know it's, I don't have a, it's Saturday, I don't have nothing else going on. I, I'll do a picket sign, I'll go take the streets, I'll go march. Every single day you have the capacity to usurp the white supremacist system that we're a part of specifically mainly primarily by uh your participation in the economic system right and so so please i that, that's where kind of i want to end it i really want to make sure you guys understand that our power our long-lasting multi-generation power 
it lies specifically in how we spend our money. So make sure we go out our way, we support those who are us, who look like us. Okay. And that's, thank that's you, where I'm going to Thanks so much, Albert. Thank you, Chris. And uh, thank you for the work that you do in the background for us. Chris is our communication person. He's the one making sure that we are online and uh, making sure that we are live on Facebook uh, and other uh, social media. Thank you, Chris, for what you do. Um, the next uh, young lady is another uh, um, activist and uh, singer and uh, very active in the Massachusetts area. Uh, we welcome Rebecca Noel. Before Rebecca, I wanna, I wanna apologize. I, I mentioned, I apologize to Daddy Joseph, uh, but I should really apologize to everybody who is in the queue that's, that's been waiting. So uh, I know your time is precious. The reason I said Daddy Joseph is because that I know she was pretty pressed on time and wanted to have a specific time. But I do apologize to everyone who is waiting in the queue. So we're trying to get there. Rebecca? Hello. First, I want to say thank you so much uh, for organizing such a beautiful event. Nothing makes me happier than seeing Black voices coming together to speak about uh, all the ways that we can push forward as a community. Um, to keep it brief, I, I think there's just two things that I really want to touch upon. First is, despite the, what the media might show, it has been refreshing to see that throughout the world, on a daily basis, people are coming together to march for Black lives. And we're not getting as much media and press as possible as there should be, but it is beautiful to see it. So don't think that because it's not on your timelines that it's not still happening. And with that, if any way that we're able to promote what is happening, whether that be marching with other people, whether it be donating to bail funds, whether it be just spreading information at a time like oh, this, uh. information is wealth, information is absolutely everything. So I encourage all of you to find all of the, the ways possible to, to be a voice and to be an ally and to use your platform. I believe in using your platform, no matter how big or small it is, to, to promote things that are going on. Um, it's, it takes a village. And what we're asking for are things that we have been fighting for for generations. Uh, and and I, I have a lot of hope for the future, but it only happens when we all stick together and we keep marching. And with that, I also do wanna raise a point that even within ourselves as a community, we can look to ways to dismantle the parts of white supremacy that have, that have seeped into our own community. So that's addressing things like colorism. It's addressing things like sexism as well. It is a movement, Black Lives Matter is a movement in which we're trying to dismantle white supremacy. And we also have to acknowledge the way that it impacts the way that we interact with one another. And so have those conversations as well from your own group just to see what are all the ways that we can make sure that we are supporting our black brothers and sisters, no matter who they are, what they do, but supporting them, amplifying their voices and being there to protect them and to guide them as well, because it is just as important to look within ourselves as to fight what's happening on the outside as well. My final thing is there are so many black entrepreneurs and black businesses that need our support. And I think a lot of times people, when they think of black business, they think of cheaper or discount, but the same way that you have no problem spending $35 on a product for a, a white owned business, you should keep that same energy for a black owned business as well. It is supporting our own community, uplifting our own community. And that means supporting black creatives, black entrepreneurs, black businesses. You know, I'm in Boston and it, I'm thankful to have such an amazing hub of black businesses that are there to support. So do your research, see ways that you can support black people in our community who are offering services and offering goods that we can support as well, because it is also taking our community and taking an active voice and making sure, uh, active voice and actions uh, in making sure that we're pushing forward as well and supporting our own. Uh, because if we don't do it, who will? And we also have to lead by example as well. So with that, I just wanna say thank you to everyone who's been uh, raising such amazing points and I look forward to seeing what happens in the world. And I, I choose to remain positive because I think that there's a lot of beautiful things that can happen in this world if we just stick together and keep fighting. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca uh, Noel. Thank you very much. While we cue Johnny Celeste, Johnny Celeste, I'm gonna just uh, blast a little bit of music. Johnny, whenever you're ready. Well, I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? Awesome. Wonderful. Well, 
Good Thank afternoon. You. John is the uh, is uh, currently one of the motor, uh, host of the of the Mojo Show. Thank so, you. Thank you. Leader Thank in, you. Uh, in the New York area. Thank you very much, and a member of the Haitian United Front. Um, uh, well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's really a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, I am absolutely honored and and humbled um, to be among you, and uh, I've been listening to everybody. And um, I feel really fortunate to be living um, in these special times. Um, they are times of turbulence, but also times of great opportunity. Uh, we all come together today to say that Black Lives Matter and to remember uh, people like Philandro Castilla, who was murdered in front of his children. We want to remember Brianna Taylor, who still hasn't had justice because his killers are still walking the street. Uh, they killed her in her bedroom while she was sleeping. We're here to also remember George Floyd, who was suffocated in front of all of us uh, um, in public. In public. Uh, but I have to say that we also hear when we say Black Lives Matter that we not only care about Black lives here in America, uh, but also Black lives in Haiti and everywhere else. And so when I think about Black Lives Matter, I also think about more recently, a couple of days ago, the two young dancers, Nancy and Sebastian, who were killed uh, and uh, burnt, um, viciously killed and burnt. Um, and I also think about the many innocent lives that we're losing in Haiti. So to understand Black Lives Matter, I think it is for me about reimagining um, a world that is about anti-Blackness everywhere, not just here in America, but anti-Blackness everywhere, but particularly here in America, as well as in Haiti. Um, it is also, as others have mentioned before, when we say Black Lives Matter, it's important that we think of it in terms of social, economic, and political power, both here and in Haiti. So to keep it short, I will close with just three uh, basic, um, uh, three suggestions and very humbly make these three suggestions that others have alluded to before. Number one, I would like to humbly suggest that folks really step up and in this time and join an organization. It could be the United Front, but it could be um, any other organizations that are focused on issues that are pushing the Black agenda forward. Number two, I would say that as a community, it is important for us to build alliances. Those alliances have to be built with African-American community, the Latino community, the Asian-American community, and also with white allies, because we cannot do this on our own. We need to build bridges. We need to develop alliances. And finally, um, as others have said, you need to walk the talk. You need to put your money where your mouth is. You need to put your effort, your smart, your intelligence, where your passion is, where your heart is. And so I will end here and I say thank you very much to the United Front, to all the members and to all of you who are here. And I appreciate the opportunity. Have a good one. Thank you, Johnny. And uh, while uh, Johnny mentioned that he is a member, I do I, I do want to put a, a, a um, you know a little spot here that uh, you can become a member of the United Front by going to www.haitianunitedfront.org, www.haitianunitedfront.org, and please join us and become a member and let's 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 uh, fight together. Um, next, the fight is not just in the United States. Um, the fight is everywhere, uh, as we have uh, Chris from Haiti. Uh, we also have now Derek uh, Laguerre, who is, uh, who is an activist in Canada. Derek? Hi, everyone. Um, I would like to thank the board and uh, everyone who's here uh, for allowing me to speak and also to listen. Um, there are three main points that I wanted to, to bring forward. The first one being solidarity. Um, I believe Nunat, she, she mentioned it uh, before. Um, so, that, so I've lived in the US and Canada and in Haiti. What I found was that black people are oppressed wherever they are and whatever origins they have. So from Africa, from, uh, from the Caribbean, et cetera. Um, and 
why I say solidarity, it's because everywhere I've also seen that we tend to dif differentiate one from another. Um, we fight as Asian, but not as Asians, but not as Black people or as minorities. Minorities. So I wanted to bring this forward, and um, so that there is solidarity between us Black men and women in the West, but also bring a Haitian touch to it, because as it has been said, Haiti is. Um, well, the reason, one of the reasons why we have rights, one of the reasons why uh, we're free. Um, but the thing is, even throughout all of these, those years, we're still oppressed. We, we're still, we're not free entirely. We're still being dehumanized. We're, we're, we're still being killed. So they, these are stuff that we need to, to, to tackle. Um, so why I say the Haitian history is because as it has been stated, we helped different other countries from Latin America, from Europe, and the US as well. I believe that if we bring this forward, if we like, because we've always been silent, they've always made us uh, stay silent in regards to our history, what we've accomplished and what have you. I believe this would be the time for us to speak up to, to because it's histoire, not histoire, c'est une histoire qui est, qui est inspirante. And whenever we we uh, we tell we tell or tell what happened, um, there are a lot of people who can um, who can be inspired by it and want change. Um, so we have a responsi responsibility as Haitians to um, to um, speak our story to try to to make people understand that um, just having the right to live is not enough. We also need the 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 right to to, well, not have the right to be alive, but the right to live, the right to, to enjoy your life, to, to not be dehumanized, to not uh, be guilty before even seeing a jury, and um, the right to speak up on like the oppressions that are being done to us, basically. Um, the second point that I would like to bring forward is, or um, like, or, um, like what, what what are we going to do like what what is what is our um no no plan c'est quoi nos plans en fait um what i mean by that there are different ways for us to 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 act it could be boycotting the economy it could be um investing in our communities it could be investing um in our um our uh, black owners but also why i was saying solidarity is because if if we have that that ce sentiment d'appartenance, ce sentiment que chacun on est des frères. Pas c'est pas un haïtien, pas un africain, on est tous des frères. If we have that that uh, ce sentiment là, I believe that we're capable of accomplishing big great things. Um, so, Eric, yep, <laughs> speed it up a bit, please. Yes. Um, so yes. Yeah, so those are the, the two main points that I wanted to bring forward. So the first one being solidarity. The second one being how are we going to do it? So politically, we have to have uh, une voix unie, not necessarily uniform, but we need to have um, a certain power to be able to to, to dictate um, the the legislations that are being brought forward, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yes, that, that was the two main points that I had to bring forward. Thank you very much, Derek, to bring the voice of Canada, the Haitian community from Canada in this in this in this mix. Obviously, we want to work with you guys. Uh, it doesn't matter where you're at; the fight is 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 worldwide. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna skip the schedule for a little bit because Sorel Keton needs to go, and uh, he has a class that he's teaching at four. So, Sorel, please take the floor. Sorel. Soel Kiton, uh, he may have already left to start his program. Uh, if he does come back, I will uh, go to him. Um, going to Eugenia Charles. Eugenia Charles, uh, we are behind on time. So please um, be, be succinct. Eugenia, Charles from DC. Yes, I'm trying to get the video to show up. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for having me, and thank you for organizing this wonderful event. 
Well, thank you to all the members of the United Front. But I, I think a lot of people have already covered a lot of issues. Um, in moving forward, what I think it's important for us to do as a community is uh, we talk about education, but what type of education? I believe we all are parents, and I want to congratulate your son, Sebastian, for doing such a wonderful job. Our children may be attending different institutions, but when they come to our household, what we teach them, what we expose them to is what's going to guide them where they go, what they do when they are out there. So I think as parents and as members of this community, we need to take the responsibility on educating our children through African-centered materials so they can identify themselves with their society, with their community. We need to work to uh, solve some of the disparities we have within the Haitian community. Um, in terms of, we talk about voting, we talk about the census. I think in the United States as a community, there's a lot of isolation within ourselves. We need to work to bridge some of these isolations because if we do not pull it together, we cannot make an impact. We can go out and vote a candidate. After you vote that person, what do we do? We need to stay united. We need to stay proactive. Whether it's on immigration issue, we have a lot of challenges, but sometimes our members don't always come out to support the cause to take it to the next level. So we have to be very proactive in keeping forward with those challenges that we are facing. I think uh, our founding father, Desaline, put this word forward for us by saying that every person who's a slave who stepped foot on Haiti become a free individual. That was a challenge to us from the very beginning. That was a challenge to say that we Haitians as a responsibility and a greater role to play in supporting the black race in taking this Black Lives Matter movement forward. Because very early on, he told us that we as black people, we are important and our lives matters. So I think from the economic perspectives, we need to support our Haitian business business, but we also need to put structures together that teach our Haitian businesses how to provide quality customer services so we can keep our businesses open, so we can treat our customers better in moving forward. Encourage our children to read folks like Antenor Firme, Benito Sylvain, who've done great work in Pan-Africanism and also the human race. I thank you, Albert, and all the United Front members for all the great things you have done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eugenia. I know you're doing a great job in DC with your radio show, uh, the only radio show in the DC area. So thank you for keeping that up. Um, next, we're going to Charlotte Lucien. Please uh, be mindful that uh, we are running short on time. And I do apologize for anyone who's waiting in the queue. I'm trying to get to you as quickly as possible. Please indulge with us. Um, Charlotte Lucien. Charlo. Okay, I'm gonna queue, uh, we'll queue Charlo a little bit later again if uh, when we do hear, hear from him. The next person we're gonna hear from is a candidate uh, for a judgeship in, in Montgomery County, Maryland, uh, Marilyn Pierre. Marilyn, thank you for your patience. I know you've been here, you were one of the first person who logged in this uh, earlier. Well, thank you very much. You know, I really appreciate the opportunity that you've given me and I really enjoyed listening to everyone. I, I, I have agreed with so many different things that's been said, but I know we're short on time. As Alpes say, uh, I am running for judge in Montgomery County, Maryland. Uh, Montgomery County, Maryland is especially a problem because not only do we need the Black Lives Matter movement, but we really actually need to vote for uh, the people who are going to give us what we need to obtain justice. What I mean by that is that uh, Montgomery County, Maryland arrests a higher percentage of the um, It seems like we lost uh, sound from Marilyn. We'll see if that uh, if that comes soon. But while we wait for her, I wonder if uh, if uh, as we wait for her, we would like to say that um, we we won the primary in, in Montgomery County. We're waiting to uh, go into the general, so we want about one hundred or two thousand votes. It's like the best uh, for any Haitian ever done in this community. So, but the fight's not over. To thank you, thank you. Having that, I'm gonna play some music to cue uh, to wait a little bit. Um, 
Oh, I, I don't know oh. what happened. All of a sudden, I was disconnected. But anyway, I'll, I'll try to make it um, quick. If anybody would like to help me with my campaign or would like to know more about my campaign, my web address is uh, pierreforjudge.com. So that's P-I-E-R-R-E-F-O-R-J-U-D-G-E.com. And you could find my email address there if you want to email me or my telephone number if you want to call or fax me. Again, it's pierreforjudge.com. You Thank can you type it in the, Please type it in the chat for everyone. Okay, uh, I, will, I will do that. Thank you yeah. again, Albert. Great job. So our next speaker needs a drum roll. Um, so I'm going to cue a little bit of music as uh, we wait for... Uh, I'm return. Mem la sulinda. One. What's your name? Wait, no time to. Okay. Uh, represent, Representative Joseph uh, was, uh, she's also an attorney. Uh, she was in the DC area for a while, but now she represents, uh, not sure exactly which county in uh, in Florida. So My name is. We apologize for keeping you on the line. Non, c'est pas grave. Ma remercie pour bon travail que a fait là. M'coué ma senti mélange en anglais à créole parce que créole parler, on a souhaité créole comprendre. Um, everybody has a part to play, you know, when we're talking about Black Lives Matter. In any movement, whether you're talking about the civil rights movement or the Black Lives Movement, Black Lives Matter movement, you know, we need to have a Martin and you need to have a Malcolm. Sometimes there's a time for police and sometimes there's a time for war. Because there's a time for each one of those tools in the strategy. Um, and when we talk about those roles in the struggle for justice and equality, you know, sometimes, you know, some people have a role in the streets, some in detention centers, um, like Gerlin Joseph, you're going to hear about later on in dealing with our immigrant crisis in the Black Lives Matter movement. Some people, like many of the lawyers you've heard on the call, have a role to play in the courtroom and the judges as well. When we think about what's going on with the cases and whether people get charged, there's prosecutors at play. What those sentences look like and how the, the cases developed, that has to do with the judges. So think about those things as we go forward. Um, some people has a, have a role to play in the voting booth, some on the phone, making phone calls for candidates or to encourage people to vote. Um, some is to educate, not just in the classroom, but in our churches, temples, mosques, and locker rooms, or just with your friends when people say some crazy stuff that, that shows that there's a, a white supremacist issue there. Um, now, let's talk about what the Haitian community can do to support the Black Lives Matter movement. So let me just start by saying that we're all Black. Haitians don't always have to do their own thing, right? Some of us are bicultural and work within the movement already, and we're seamlessly a part of it. Um, now, if you feel culturally separate and you want to plug, one thing you can do is partner up with groups that are already working on what's going on. Um, and you can partner with what they're doing to plug in um, and amplify and support, support worthy efforts. Uh, provide, whether it's supplies to protesters, and those supplies can be anything from water, masks, snacks, hand sanitizer. You know, if you think about putting all of this stuff together, all of those things are needed. When we had several of the civil rights movement struggles that exceeded, you know, and I'll just give you one example, the Montgomery bus boycott um, lasted for over a year, actually uh, quite a bit longer than that. Um, but there were people there to support the movement, whether it was providing food, providing water, um, and whatever else that was needed. So be a part of, of whatever part you can play. So whether it's offering legal assistance to those that may be arrested, um, and just be a part of that brain trust. So let me tell you a little bit about what I'm doing down here in Florida. So you know, with the movement and you see the marches and stuff in the streets, but what is that going to translate to? We are working on making sure that that translates into some real lasting change um, on the legislative front in terms of budgets, policies and practices and things that we can change to eliminate some of these structural and systemic issues um, that propagate racism um, within our society that lead to the Black Lives Matter issues that we see all the time, not just as it relates to police brutality, but across the spectrum. So working with over 40 local organizations, including law enforcement, who've provided input on what they think needs to be done, we're taking those ideas 
um, researching some more and developing some tangible courses of action for our community and Miami-Dade County and Broward to organize around. Um, and that's gonna include everything from legislation at the local, state and federal level, identifying model policies and practices um, and other ways that we can get engaged, like things that we wanna push for in these various budgets. So some legislatures meet year round, some like Florida only meet part time. So we don't meet again until the beginning of next year, really. Um, so in the meantime, there are things that can be happening at the local and federal level. So we're organizing around those. If you're interested in finding out more information or if you wanna participate in that brain trust in that working group um, to, to deal with things that can happen on a federal level, feel free to reach out to me. My website is dottyjoseph.com pour les haïtiens c'est dottyjoseph.com with just one T-I-E um, and I can be happy to plug you in. Now, a couple of people mentioned this but I wanted to highlight something that Oveli mentioned earlier and that is that elections have consequences. She didn't use those words, those are my words, but, but let me break that down. Um, we have seen all around the United States, the voter suppression tactics that are used. They're trying to discourage people from voting. They keep you in line for a long time and there's much more to come. And if you live in one of those Southern states, know that that voter suppression is real. Um, I think we've seen it in Georgia and the spiking COVID numbers thereafter. One easy way to mitigate this is to vote by mail. Find out what your local policy and procedure is to vote by mail and make sure that you request that ballot so that you can get it. You won't have to deal with any of those voter suppression issues. You don't have to deal with um, exposing yourself to COVID. Please, please, please vote by mail. If you're in the Miami-Dade County area, I have a webinar on how to do that. Just go to facebook.com slash Dottie Joseph and then just scroll down in the videos and you'll see it. I have it in English, I have it in Creole, and I have it in Spanish. So tout le trois l'onio, sous besoin, yo la. Number two, vote the entire ballot. People have mentioned this on the call, but I really want to emphasize it. It's important for us in the context of this movement and even beyond this movement to elect people who understand and can fight for our issues. At the local level, that means your top law enforcement person, you have a say so in who that person is. Your local government officials, if you're watching all of the stories, somebody has to fire the cop, somebody has to decide they're gonna discipline the cop, somebody has to do that. You have a voice in deciding who that person is because as we've seen, sometimes they pay attention and sometimes they turn a blind eye. We wanna make sure that we're electing people who are not gonna turn a blind eye. At the state level, each state has latitude to address issues ranging from things like the citizen's arrest law, which is what we saw with the Maude Arbery in Georgia, to scan your ground laws in Florida. When you have people who understand these issues, it's a whole lot easier. I can tell you that from personal experience at the state house. We are a Republican dominated legislature. And as a result, there are a lot of things that we cannot do. Now, it's not a Democrat or Republican issue. I think at the end of the day, these are people issues, but sometimes these issues are deemed politically charged. So be mindful of that. Um, at the federal level, the Congressional Black Caucus has been working on quite a few items that we're trying to support um, and get other people to rally around. As you know, there's a dichotomy between the House and the Senate, and unfortunately, that's largely drawn on um, party lines. Thirdly, once we have these candidates, we need to support them. Avocat Nunet Zamate Dissa, and I'm just going to reiterate it. Um, you know, we have, for example, in Florida, we have several people running. You just heard from a judicial candidate. Um, Marilyn Pierre, who, and it was great to see her and all my other friends on the call, you know, Albert and all of you guys from DC and like all over that, you know, we've interacted with. But the point is, um, we have these candidates, so we want to support them. In Florida, I'll highlight two more judges that we have on the ballot, Judge Phoebe Francois in Broward County. So if you have anybody who lives in Miramar, Pembroke Pines, Florida, it's a countywide race please tell them to support her, Judge Phoebe Francois. In Miami-Dade County, we have um, Olenike Adebayo in Miami-Dade County. So what does that look like? So a lot of the candidates might be shy to tell you this, but I'm gonna tell it to you for them because some of them can't tell you legally. But what that support looks like, it can be any number of things, but two easy and very straightforward ways is to give. Give to their, can their candidacy, give to their campaign. She gave her website, please look her up. Um, you know, these other judges, if you just Google them, Phoebe Francois, Olenike Adebayo, and I can type those in once I'm done speaking. But the point is, 
we need to support these candidates. I myself am up for re-election. If you want to pitch in, go ahead and pitch in whatever you can. And that's at dottyjoseph.com. Now, Eugenia touched on this, but I want to unpackage what it means. Once we elect these people, it's not just, oh, nous et lui, oh, now we have somebody and that's great. No, you stay engaged. You stay civically engaged. When there are issues that come along that we need to advocate for as a community, then we need to make sure that we get the word out. So, you know, connect on social media, see what they're posting about. If it's relevant, share it. Um, and we saw the power of this. I don't know how many people on the call are familiar with what happened with L'Union Suite pushing for and advocating against um, what was going on with Netflix with a documentary that said that Haitians had AIDS. It was some BS from back in the 80s. So again, we need to continue to stay engaged and shut those foolish things down. Um, lastly, I want to talk about running for office. So my personal mission is to help reach everybody, reach their God-given potential. In the political context, that means building a bench of quality candidates, not just in Florida, but anywhere in the United States. So, you know, we need candidates who care about our issues, can fight for them, who are ethical and will make our community proud, not just as Haitian Americans, as Black people, but also as just human beings who care about doing the right thing. We have ample example from the White House on down of people having the opposite kind of candidate. We need good quality candidates. So I am planning a, a training for candidates in early August here in South Florida. If you are interested in participating in that um, or know somebody who should be, please don't hesitate to contact me. Again, my website is dottiejoseph.com, D-O-T-I-E joseph.com. Um, and I, I want to underscore what um, Assemblyman Van Vanel said about the census. Our communities tend to be undercounted. When I, when I say our communities, Black people, um, immigrants, and Haitians in particular, which means we get less resources and less representation. For the first time in history, we can identify ourselves as Haitian Americans on the census. Please, please, please do that because it does and it will make a difference. If you have questions about anything I've said, feel free to reach out. Again, the website is dottiejoseph.com, D-O-T-I-E, joseph.com, or direct message me on Instagram. Again, thank you, Albert, and everybody else on the call. I've enjoyed the dialogue and look forward to hearing more. Thank you, Dottie. Thank you very much. Um, again, Dottie is running uh, for office, so don't forget to go and visit uh, her website. She will type all the information for us in our chat room. Um, going next to uh, Louisiana, uh, Dr. Jacques Bengay from AHEAD. Uh, Jacques thank Bengay. you, sir. Really, really appreciate it. You guys are doing a great job since a lot of the speakers have addressed the issues that uh, I was going to address, the speech that I was going to make. I and I would like to pass my time to Judge Jean Baptiste because remember, before we had Black Lives Matter, we had Haitian Lives Matter, and he's one of the leaders uh, who's been fighting for us in the community. So thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Good job. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Bengay, for yielding your time to Dr. <laughs> to uh, Judge Jean Baptiste. Uh, before we do that, we're going to Dr. Magali Backer from uh, Virginia. Dr. Backer. Dr. Magali Backer. I'm not hearing from Dr. Backer. Um, we'll see if she queues up. Um, we, we can go to California to Gerlin Joseph. Gerlin, please unmute yourself. Good morning, uh, Albert uh, and everyone. I don't know if you can see me or hear me. Yes, I was can. having some difficulties uh, on my end. Um, and due to, to you know short time, I'm going to be really quick. Um, so many things have been said before me, and thank you, um, Representative Joseph, uh, for, for touching on so many different points. Um, my, my first experience with, with uh, um, police brutality was in New York when Abner Lima, you know, was, was sodomized and left for dead um, in, in, in these bathroom stalls in New York. And I remember my father made a point um, to go visit Abner Luima along with Michael Jackson and Jesse Jackson and all of those people. While we were standing in that room, I was very young, yet I saw this man completely disfigured. A brother 
you know, that, that we knew from Haiti. That was my first interaction, my first acknowledgement with police brutality. Now, fast forward for, for now, watching the lives of, of Brother George being taken in public, again, took me back to that moment. And then hearing all of those people who came you know, before me speaking about Black Lives Matter, uh, we at the Haitian Bridge Alliance have partnered with uh, Opo Tometi, who is one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter, because we understand that Black Lives Matter no matter where you are born. So in this fight for Black lives, my role primarily is to bring together the, 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 the African diaspora, you know, whether you are from Haiti, from the Caribbean, or from the motherland to the African Americans who are descendants of slaves in this country. Understanding that the fight for Black lives is a fight against a system that has been oppressing and suppressing lives for over 400 years. Understanding that when we Haitians or Africans come to this country, it doesn't matter what speak, what language we speak, the moment we step foot into this land, we are Black. And when the police stops, they don't care if you speak Creole or French or whatever. They will shoot the Haitians the same way they will shoot the Africans, the same way they will shoot the African American. Understanding that this is our fight. You know, we hear a lot of different things. And that's why we continue to bring our ancestors to this fight, understanding that the Haitian community have been leading the fight for Black lives for a very long time. And we continue to, to bridge that gap. One of the main things that we also need to understand is how the criminal justice system is interacting with the immigration justice system understanding that a black immigrant is 10 times more likely to end up in prison and be deported than others because of over policing of our community. Understanding that Miami have a large number of young men and young women who are Haitians in the, in, in the uh, criminal justice system because of all of those different issues. And I, I know oh we are God. pressed for time, so I will just say that I believe in our motto of that's why I was very excited when Albert invited me to join um, this amazing panel. Um, so my call is to continue that fight for Black lives, no matter where we are from, get engaged in voting in the census, get engaged in immigration issues because we understand that immigration is a black issue. Immigration is, an, is a Haitian issue. So thank you so much for having me, Albert. And I hope that we can get together again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gailene. I know you're doing great work in San Diego uh, with the immigrants coming, crossing uh, Haitian immigrants and other immigrants crossing the border. Uh, thank you for the work that you do. Uh, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, Dr. Magali Backer, you were muted before. Please uh, try to unmute it on your end. Chris, see if she's unmuted. Dr. Backer, I know we've been communicating on text. I know you're there, but we cannot hear you. I'll give you a chance to clear it up as uh, play some music. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I just want to echo uh, what uh, Gerlene just mentioned earlier, Munio um, Felafos, and I am uh, a proud uh, Haitian. I think that we are natural uh, freedom fighters. Um, and this is a critical time in this country as Haitian Americans for us to join all um, children of African descent to combat racial injustice and modern day lynching. I think that this is also, there are ways, there are three concrete ways that we can really uh, address this. The three solutions, um, Al, I think is that first, a cultural shift to address some of the 
our own biases within our community um, that, you know, some, sometimes, unfortunately, at the personal level, perhaps our families might have taught us that, you know, don't act the way some of the people act here in the States, et cetera, et cetera, colorism issues. So we need to work on sort of shifting some of those attitudes towards um, understanding that we are all Black people. Um, and then secondly, recognizing that we are beneficial immigrants, we are beneficiaries of our brothers and sisters here and all of the advocacy and their long fight in um, fighting uh, for uh, racial injust uh, fighting against racial injustice here in the United States. So recognizing that we, we owe a lot of thanks to African Americans here who've been fighting. And then finally, I want to say that collectively, we can only achieve this together. Our motto is Union for la Force. I think if we are not able to Go marching, go protesting, um, supporting all of the initiatives that, you know, just mentioned on pretty much by everyone on the call. Collectively, at the end of the day, is what matters. Um, because if we don't, we'll find ourselves being set back another 200 years. So I really hope that um, the uh, Johnny Celeste mentioned us, you know, engaging further, joining a cause supporting our uh, uh, legis you know, our candidates here in the United States. Um, I think that together is the only way that we can um, uh, overcome these challenges. Thank you very much. And on behalf of Haiti Renewal Alliance, also known as HRA, I thank the United Front as a partner. Um, thank you, Albert and uh, Gigi Lionel for your leadership and all of the members of the United Front for your vision in trying to move, move this initiative and other initiatives forward for the Haitian people. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you, Magali. And of course, thank you for the work that you do in HRA, especially in the um, disaster response area and, and the business uh, uh, leadership as well. Uh, thank you. So the next person, I'm going to cue a little music so I can get her to be ready. Uh, the next person will be, uh, well, first, I, I want to apologize. I want to apologize to uh, Shoel Ketan, who uh, had to leave the line. Um, he was represent, he's the president of the uh, Chamber of Commerce of uh, Georgia. Uh, I think he would, uh, there are many words that he could share with us. He's a very uh, wise gentleman. Uh, we missed on, 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 on his speech today. Uh, I will uh, send my uh, regrets again to him for not uh, having him on, on the call. The next person that we have is actually an, uh, an ex-Obama appointee to, this, to the Commerce Department. Um, so as, as she gets uh, cued, uh, I want to uh, introduce you to Clev Mesidor. Again, she was a, a ex uh, political appointee for Obama. Um, Clev? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Albert and United Front, for allowing me to be here and adding my voice. I want to say Black Lives Matter. And the greatest example for me is Brianna Taylor. Brianna Taylor, Brianna Taylor. She was killed on March 13th. As was mentioned, three police officers broke into her home in Kentucky. She was 26 years old, an EMT. She was killed. Her fiance, who was in the home with her, was the only person arrested because he tried to defend himself when police broke up, bro broke into their home. So she's dead. He was the only one arrested. None of the three officers who murdered her have been arrested. Now, one of them was fired from the police department and now is disputing that. So we cannot let up. We need justice for Brianna. Black Lives Matter is important. A lot of people say blue lives matter, why not all lives matter? It's because we need to remind them that all, all lives matter and Brianna Taylor is a great example of that. I work in the cryptocurrency area and we talk about decentralization. Black Lives Matter is about decentralization. People complain, who, who leads it? Who's in charge? No one owns it, it belongs to everyone. It's a movement and it has goals and the goals is supporting black lives. So it's great that the Haitian community, African communities are involved. There are tons of ways to get involved that I would recommend. One is supporting legal defense funds. I will tell you, I'm all about Baji who works with Galen Joseph, you know, NAACP, 
and others. You know, I'm not for the ACLU because when our people need help, they're not going to go to the ACLU, but Gerlin and Baji are gonna to have to scramble for resources. And also, you know, I wanna encourage people to participate in protests, but also, you know, to support some of the policies. I'm a big supporter of defund the, poli the police. Learn more about what that means and consider to participate. Lastly, you know, people say to vote, 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 wonderful. I worked in the Obama administration. I worked 15 years in Washington politics. Know and hold people accountable before you elect them. Find out who's in their campaign, who have they hired, who looks like us who are in their leadership. That matters because it's just like a marriage, right? If, if somebody doesn't do something while they're dating you, engaged to you, it's not gonna happen when you're married. So we can no longer afford to hope things are better. We have to hold people accountable before we elect them. So again, Black Lives Matter, Haitian Lives Matter, I'm thrilled to be here. And we, we, I feel there's a new generation shifting in terms of the collaboration between Gen Xers, Millennials, Zoomers, and Boomers. Thank you. Thank you, Clev. Thank you for uh, for being so patient with us because uh, we know we went over time and you you were also early. Uh, we want to apologize for everybody who was uh, who was uh, uh, had to wait. Uh, I do have. Uh, I, I hope Charlo Charlo Lucien is back online. Charlo, are you back online? Uh, can't see Charlo. Charlo, are you there? Okay, I do not do not hear Charlo. Uh, I'm gonna play a little music as we cue in the last the next speaker and will be also the last speaker. So Judge Jean Baptiste, please get ready. So again, this was a program by, put together by the United Front. Uh, Black Lives Matter, Haitian Black Lives Matter. Uh, we heard from different leaders from different states and Haiti and Canada. Um, we heard a lot of things that uh, you who are listening can take can do to actually uh, effectuate change. Uh, each one of us can actually do something in this fight. Uh, if you if you want to go in the streets and uh, and fight then do that if you if you if you see a candidate that you want to support they said support our local businesses there's so many ways that were suggested here to uh to help in in this fight so uh again i want we want to thank you for joining this program um as we bring in our uh our uh, uh judge from uh, Chicago, George Lino John Batiste, who's been uh, who's been very active in the Haitian community, in the American community, who actually walked uh, the walks in the in the in the early 70s as well, and and to today. So, uh, the song that I played today, I wanted to uh, say something about it. Uh, I wanted to bring us to our roots, and also uh, this song is asking for all of us to put together and and sing this song with me. This song of freedom. Um, so that's why I find it, it was fitting to put it as a background music. Um, and you know, how are we, how are we doing under these, under these oppressions? How are we? Uh, and, and together we are, we are always going to be here. We are fight, we are a group of fighters. Our parents are fighters. We stand in their shoulders. We have their strength. Let's call our, our drum beats are beating in the street to call on our ancestors to help us, to give us strength as a community. Like they said, join the other communities and have this fight. And for once and for all, let's bring this fight so that we have full equality in this world. Judge Amatis. Thank you very much, Abe. And thank you for all of the members of the uh, board of the Haitian United Front uh need la justice and and to all the executive members for this extraordinary kind of uh, outreach um we stand on the shoulders of our ancestors as Albert had just stated and they cry out to us to continue to right the wrongs that have been imposed upon them uh, for so many 
centuries, there's been a transfusion of resources from the Africans to the Europeans. And the Africa and the Europeans stand pretty well healed, pretty well off, almost everywhere that they are. In whatever nations that they're at, they're dominating, their quality of life is much higher uh, for them than the quality of life of the Africans. We've always have to look from the bottom up, but we've always struggled. So for every moment, I think CLR James said in his book, uh, The Black Jacobins, that for every moment that we were enslaved, we re resisted, we fought back. So imagine the brutality that had to be imposed upon us to keep us in line over such an extraordinary number of years. And so we fight for our ancestors, we fight for ourselves, we fight for our um, futures, future generations that will follow us. We also fight to repair the harm. So a lot of the fight that is going on right now uh, Black Lives Matter stands for, calls for reparations. And I think that, you know, if we think about the Haitian struggle, um, it took the lead in trying to uh, undo the slavocracy that had dominated the entire Western world over such a long period of time. It is they, it is the our Haitian brothers and sisters who took the lead and restored the humanity of the Africans uh, back to them so that every nation in the world, all the black nations, Senegal, Ghana, wherever you talk, whenever you talk about the Haitians, they recognize the contributions that we have made and they recognize the interconnection that they have with us. And so in speaking of interconnectedness, every aspect of our struggle is interconnected and interdependent on one another. Today, we are here, many of us as Haitians, Haitian Americans, we are here enjoying certain civil rights that we could not have enjoyed in the uh, 1950s and 1940s. And so it is a product, our rights that we enjoy today, and I think Dodi Joseph might have said that, uh, is a result of the work of our brothers and sisters in the civil rights movement and the anti-Jim uh, Crow movement, the anti-Jim Crow terror movement. And so they have set the stage for us to continue to do the work that we do. And many of us, we are the harvest of that work because so many of us have been able to access higher education, uh, quality housing, professions, et cetera, et cetera, that were historically closed to black people, it is because of the fight of our predecessors here on this land in the United States. And so just as we as Haitians has set the stage for African Americans to have gained their, their emancipation because we broke up the whole slavery business. We broke it up in Latin America. We broke it up in so many places. We too depend on their work that they've done to advance the struggle. So as we move forward, we have to get organized. We have to stay organized. We can't just observe the world. Black Lives Matter is telling us it's not about observation. And it's not about just getting, getting along, going along to get along. We have to participate in the process to make a difference. And when we say Black Lives Matter, it's not just, as Albert say, going to the street, although it's one front of the struggle. But as Dodie had mentioned, it is about running for office, whether it is at the school district level to look out for our kids, whether it is on county boards, whether it is as state senator, whether it is national office, we matter. So we've got to be able to make our statement to make a difference. And also at the level of organization, the United Front is an organization that is intended to try to build a broad coalition of forces to make a difference. Not only make a difference where we act, we have to fight for our empowerment here in the United States or folks in Canada, folks in France, but also 
we have to make a difference in Haiti by fighting for better governance to make sure that our nation continues to make a positive difference in the world. So don't just observe the world, people. Engage, participate in it to make a difference. The fight for Africans all over the place is a fight to repair the harms. Hence the fight for reparations, for Haitians in particular, we know that we've had to even come out of our pockets to pay uh, a debt, a, a ransom to the French. We demand the restitution of that fund as well. So it is together that we'll move forward. The organization has already, Abed said, HaitianUnitedFront.org is the website. Get on that website, join, participate, put your hands together to make a difference. So. Thank you once again for this broad array of, of great folks who have stepped up to share their wisdom. And I'll say forward ever, backwards never. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Lionel Jean-Baptiste for the last words. We want to thank everybody who participated in this program today, especially you, the viewers. We want to thank uh, the speakers. Uh, we heard from... Uh, we heard from Mayor uh, Joseph Champagne, Tamar Torchon, Joshua Moise, Oeli Mathieu, Fermin Bakker, Evans Gramont, uh, Assembly Clyde Vanell from New York, uh, Marilyn Toussaint from Illinois, Attorney Yunot Zama from, from Boston, Massachusetts, Sebastian Dikady from, uh, from Maryland, Louis L. Nays from Connecticut, Tonya Verne from, from Maryland, Junior Philistine Jean, New Jersey, Soraya Moise from uh, Virginia. We also heard from Commissioner Monestine from Florida, Chris Gentis from Haiti, Rebecca Noel from Boston, Massachusetts, Johnny Celestine from New York, Derek Laguerre from Canada, Regina Charles from DC, Marilyn Pierre from MD, Represent Representative Dari Joseph from Florida, Dr. Jacques Benge from Louisiana, Dr. Magali Baker from Virginia, Gerlin Joseph from California, uh, Clev Mesidor from Washington, DC, and George Lionel Jean Baptiste from Illinois. We regret that you did not get to hear from the following. Abaku Patreon, thank you for agreeing to be here, but I guess you could not make it. We also did not hear from Shalo because I guess he had another scheduled uh, event. And we also regret to have not heard from Soel Ketan. Like the song that plays in the back, things gonna change gonna come. So I'll leave it as that, as you, as you uh, log off, or you can stay and listen to the rest of the song. I also want to thank all the United Front board members and all the executive board and everybody who put their hands together to make this happen. Thank you. And go to www.haitianunitedfront.org for more information and please join the organization. Keep on, keep on the fight. Change is going to come. Bye-bye now.